okay so now let's understand what are pebs peb stands for pre engineered building these are prefabricated components which we use instead of conventional sections like we have our standard sections like ismb ismc we have channel sections we have angle sections isa these are standard sections which are already available in the market and as per our design requirement we use them but sometimes it is not economical to use these structures for maybe large infra large industrial sheds and all and we in certain cases we use this prefabricated components means with the help of plates we ourselves manufacture we ourselves fabricate these components as per our requirement and then use it on our site so these are mostly tapered sections so every member is properly engineered as per the requirement and then we use it these members are fabricated on site on workshop and then these components are transported on the construction site and where we are erecting them swiftly so this process is more efficient because we can customize them as we can customize them as per our requirement this solution is economical solution compared to the conventional section here are some of the advantages of pebs we have rapid construct construction we can reduce the labor there is flexibility of design because as per our design requirement we can taper the section this is energy efficient because less number of less amount of steel is required and it is sustainable solution okay you can see this picture of one of the pre engineered building you can see the columns at the bottom the depth of the column the is less and as we go at the top the depth of the web increases same for the rafter at the end the depth is more and as we go towards the center the depth reduces so as per the bending moment of our structure or the shear force of our structure we can taper the sections as per our need so this reduces the amount of steel which we need this is the advantage of pre engineered buildings okay now i will show you one of the video where we can understand how this process is being implemented okay i'll start the video first we see the site where we want to uh, construct this shed construct this industrial structure in this case the example is they want to construct it in chennai so they see the wind speed first we calculate the wind speed as per is 875 part 3 we calculate the wind speed we will be seeing this in detail later we calculate the wind pressure then the force the external pressure coefficient and internal pressure coefficient depending upon the angle of our roof and the opening in our structure this is how we apply the load in stad for a particular frame we have many kind of loads like earthquake dead load live load wind load and all sometimes we have this central column for stability so this is a standard section you can see and this is the bending moment of our structure then at the bottom where we don't need that height we can reduce the height so as per the bending moment diagram we can taper our sections you can see over here so this will reduce the steel requirement these are the drawings we have to submit these kind of drawings to the client we have to also give the connection details this is the design report here we write everything in detail what all we have considered which codes we have used what are the properties of our material what are load cases we have considered what are the load combinations we also show the connection design and design of purlins 
okay that was a video short video for you to understand how we how the pbs are implemented on site okay now we will have a discussion on comparison between pre engineered steel warehouse and conventional steel warehouse okay so what is the difference these pre engineered steel warehouse are made of built up sections and in conventional we have the standard sections like ismb ismc here we have tapered profile in the conventional case we have uniform profile in pre engineered okay. steel case we have the optimum use of steel while in case of conventional the steel increases because we have uniform profile you can see this figure at the bottom we have less depth and as we go on the top the depth increases but in case of conventional we have uniform depth this is the basic difference between pbs and conventional warehouse okay now i'll explain you the concept behind why we have in certain cases the depth is less and why in certain cases the depth is more and how as a structural engineer we can decide this for this most of the pre i sections uh proper uh, significant section in design of any structure okay so let's understand the significance of i profile in the i profile we have the web section and the flange section so generally the web section takes the shear force which comes on the member you can see this figure below just i'll highlight it this is the flange this is the web and this is the bottom flange and here we have the the shear stress distribution you can see at the top and the bottom where we have the flange area we have the minimum shear stress and at the web area we have the maximum shear stress and at the center we have the overall maximum figure so generally by looking at this figure you can see that most of the shear force which comes on our section is carried by web and the flange take very less shear force almost negligible shear force so when you want to design a section for shear force you want to make web thicker and web larger compare it with the flange section uh, yeah flange section takes most of the bending moment so here you can see another figure highlight it this is the flange area this is the web and we have this flange the bottom flange you can see at the center you have zero bending moment bending stress and at the top and the bottom of the flange you have the maximum bending stress so if you want a section so that it takes the maximum bending stress then you have to make flange more stronger so web takes shear force and flange takes bending moment this is the basic concept of i section now let's understand why we have less depth and more depth for certain cases you might be aware of this bending stress equation which we have studied during maybe second year or first year of our engineering m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by r this is the famous bending stress equation where m is moment bending moment i is the moment of inertia sigma is the uh, stress y is the distance between the edge and the neutral axis we have e modulus of elasticity and r is the radius of curvature okay so in our case if we want to calculate stress we have stress is equal to m bending moment into y divided by i y is the distance i is the moment of inertia y by i i by y we also can say it as z that is section modulus so sigma is equal to m by z bending moment divided by section modulus so we can see from the above equation if we want to if we increase the value of z the section modulus then the bending stress decreases if we want to decrease the value of stress one thing we can do is decrease moment but we cannot decrease bending moment because it depends on the load coming on the structure so that is constant other thing what we can change is the value of z the value of z is the section modulus so if we decrease the value of z the bending stress will decrease and if we increase the value of z the bending stress will increase now i will show you 
with the help of some drawing just i know it yeah so for example we have this beam and we have bending moment here maximum and then this bending moment goes on decreasing and here it becomes zero if i say i have here bending moment of 10 and here i have maybe very less bending moment of 1 in standard case what we we say is we want to give a section for example i want to give a i section if you see the cross section it is this kind of i section yeah in standard case if we give this kind of i section here we have the value of z maybe 10 then the utilization stress utilization here it will be m by z right someone's mic is on i will suggest uh, please switch off your mics just a minute okay if anyone has doubt then they can ask but generally please keep your mics off okay so stress utilization is m by z here we have the value of m moment is 10 and the value of z section modulus is also 10 so we have full utilization of the section over here that is one but here also where we have stress here it will be m will be one because moment here is very less one and z is 10 because it is a uniform section in this case the utilization is 0 0.1 that is very less but this problem can be solved in case of tapered section for example if we have this kind of section where the depth is in decreasing as we go forward so in this profile the value of z it will be maybe one and here where the bending moment is more the value of z it will be 10. so here we will have stress utilization of 10 by 10 which is equal to one and here we will have stress utilization of bending moment by z m by z one by one here also it will be one so in the second case we have properly utilized this as a section but in the first case at the left side we have utilized it but at the right side we have not properly utilized it so in the second case there will be much saving of steel and we will have an optimum solution so this is only possible with pre-engineered building so you have to do proper engineering and you have to design this section so that is the advantage of pre-engineered building okay i'll clear this if anyone has any doubt you can ask me okay so we will go forward with the next slide okay now i will show you the bending moment diagram of a typical frame for example this is a typical frame of a shed of a warehouse you can see at the bottom of the column we have zero bending moment and as we go up the bending moment increases if we have a simply support connection similarly for the rafter at the connection between column and rafter we have maximum bending moment then the bending moment decreases so this is the typical bending moment diagram of a typical frame now this is a typical shear force diagram of a frame you can see we have constant shear force and for the rafter we have shear force and if there is any point load or concentrated load then we have drop in shear force okay and if you see this is a typical tapered section a typical pre-engineered building section where at the bottom of the column we have less depth because here we have zero bending moment and at the top we have highest depth because we have maximum bending moment over here same case is for the rafter at the corner at the connection between column and rafter we have maximum depth and then it decreases and again the depth increases because at this point we have slightly more depth more bending moment compared to center so in this way we optimize the section so that every part takes maximum utilization welcome you all in iso certified life training program etaps rcdc and excel that makes you a professional structural engineer in this training program you will learn everything about etaps and rcdc from basic to advanced real life project of medium rise structure from architecture plan to final design sheet real life project of high rise structure with all advanced topics design of structural elements using advanced excel sheets have a look over the features of this training 
There is live classes conducted by expert for one and half hour. Recording of every session with lifetime access. Can interact with expert anytime 24 by 7. Exposure to real practice. ISO certification of training completion. It's 5 star rated training program. Till now more than 1000 participants have benefited from this training program. Now you are the next. Hello everyone, welcome you all in a new ISO certified live training program, design of substructure using CSI safe Excel and manual. In this training program we will learn all about the concept of substructure design, commands in CSI safe software for the substructure design, validation of CSI safe result with your manual and advanced Excel sheets. This training program will cover 4 real life projects. In the first and second we will cover all the types of isolated foundation in CSI safe software. In the third real life project we will cover the raw foundation and in the fourth real life project there will be the coverage of pile and pile cap design design of basement wall and at the end of this training program you will learn how to prepare the final design sheet for the site execution. Have a look over the features of this training. Daily live classes conducted by experts. Recording of every session can interact with expert anytime. Exposure to real practice. ISO certification of training. It's 5 star rated training program. Till now more than 1000 participants have benefited from this training program. Now you are the next.